I am back in the lab and guys don't get me wrong I love being away on vacation and all but it really feels good to be back in the studio making money fulfilling orders and doing exactly what it is that I'm passionate about and that I enjoy doing right now I'm hooping a shirt with the uh, a sweatshirt rather handling all these orders that I had um, I made this I made this design for my old high school um, and I got a lot of orders that I had to fill even before I left for vacation. So coming back from vacation to a bunch of orders is always a good thing. All right. <laughs> As you guys can see, I'm using my Hoopmaster station with my big old 13 by 16 Mighty Hoop right here to hoop this uh, sweatshirt up before I put it on to embroider and what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that this part right here just drops straight down and I'm lining this up with my fingers at the bottom of my mighty hoop this hoop master station helps so much when you're doing stuff like this then I take this part right here with my 13 by 16 make sure this little U part right here is at the top because this one right here, this side right here is different. And I'll just put it down like that. And I'm looking to make sure that's in the middle right here. And I'll just drop this down. And I'm looking to make sure that falls in the middle. And we're ready to go. Put it on the, put it on the, uh, on the machine. Start embroidering this one. So easy. Just come over here and put it in my machine. Let's have a little talk about scaling your business because I think some of you guys are missing, not everybody, but some of you guys are missing the mark and missing huge opportunities and your businesses are probably staying in the same spot and you, and you don't know how or don't know why. There's no blueprint to this stuff. And, you know, we're just all trying to figure this out. But I think some of you guys, you know, might be missing out, right? Because um, in the comments, I hear a lot of people say, um, I'm, they'll, or they'll ask me, like, they'll say, I'm getting this machine, so I'm selling this one, right? Or um, should I get rid of this so I can upgrade to that, right? Let's talk about scaling. What does it mean to scale your business? What does it mean to scale your business, to grow your business, right? Well, first of all, let's, let's look up the proper definition of what it means to scale according to Google. Scaling a business means setting the stage to enable and support growth in your company. It means having the ability to grow without being hampered. It requires planning, some funding, and the right systems, staff, processes, and technology, and partners, right? So you say you want to scale your business, you want to grow your business, you want to create the right processes and the right things that you need, and also, according to this definition, having the right technology, right? So that you can give your company or your business the opportunity to grow. I wanted to read that for you guys because I think it's important that when you have a piece of equipment, even though you might uh, outgrow that piece of equipment, I encourage some of you guys that instead of getting rid of that old equipment to buy new equipment that you maybe keep the old equipment and add on to add on to it you know what i mean keep the old equipment and add on new equipment to it so that your business can start to get more efficient and that can start helping you scale grow your business right the faster you can get things done the more orders that you can take right the more money you can make because if you can produce faster you can make more money all right so if you're buying something new and you're replacing it with something else and you're getting rid of that old piece of equipment you might be shooting yourself in the foot you might have the latest greatest technology but it's not to say that that last the oldest technology that you had could not get the job done because obviously it did get the job done up to the point where you're able to upgrade or get a new piece of equipment why not add to your equipment right instead of getting rid of your old equipment you can scale that way and a lot of times people are like 
you know, I'm getting rid of this to get that, I'm getting rid of that to get that. Arguably, you can't really scale that way. You can't become more efficient that way. You can't output more that way, right? Even if it's something that's more efficient that has a roll feed on it or something like that, that can, you know, let you produce more. The old piece of equipment can still work, right? Or it might be a job a specific task that maybe the old piece of equipment that can do better than a new piece of equipment, but you will not be able to do that and you'll not be able to rip the, rip the benefits of, 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 of knowing that or, or be able to produce those things if you get rid of the old piece of equipment, right? I have tons and tons of old equipment and I just add on to it. Some of that old equipment that I have um, that's, that's been in my business for a while um, are, are kind of like nostalgic to me. Not only can I still use them, but they're still nostalgic because I see where I started from and I see where I am now. So um, just keep that in mind when you're getting rid of old equipment and getting new equipment. Think about it in the comments down below. Think about it. Let me know what you guys think about that. A little bit of applique here. Just got to lay this on this half right here. Make sure it's covering up that half. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I just got to cover it up. Right, right on the edge there and on the edge here. It's kind of close, but it works. All right, push this back in and we'll do the tack down stitch right here. Start that up. There we go. Nice. Love it when it works out good, baby. So let's talk about some of the different methods that we use to garment decorating. And let's think about how we can optimize those methods, how we can make things simpler, how we can produce things faster, where we spend the most time and how we can save time using each method. Let's just think, because this is the stuff that you guys need to start thinking about if you want to scale your business, if you want to grow your business, if you want to make your business more efficient. All right, so let's start with um, vinyl cutting. Let's start with vinyl cutting, right? Because that's the most common thing that people, you know, start off do, they cut vinyl with a vinyl cutter, right? You want to think about, okay, when you have the business, right, what part of pressing t-shirts, pressing vinyl onto t-shirts takes the most time and how do I speed that up or how do I make that better or how do I make that less tedious? For myself okay so let's think of some of the things that take time when um pressing vinyl on the shirts the thing that takes the most time is weeding obviously but guess what it also takes time for your machine to cut the vinyl right so cutting the vinyl and weeding the vinyl after that everything is pretty much easy right so how do we Okay, let's talk about the first part, which is cutting vinyl. Cutting the vinyl, that's the first part of the process, right? So how do we save time cutting vinyl and how do we make vinyl cutting more efficient? All right, two things come to mind. One would be to, what most people would do, upgrade your equipment, get a faster, more efficient vinyl cutter like a graph tech, right? And that's cool and all. That's cool, that's the solution. But most people are going to get a graph tech or get a better vinyl cutter, upgrade their vinyl cutter, and then get rid of, I'm just cutting out the access on the back of this sweatshirt right here. Uh, most people would upgrade their, their vinyl cutter and get rid of the old one. I encourage you not to do that because guess what? You can be doing two separate jobs. You can be doing cutting vinyl on one and doing a whole nother job on the other one, or you could be cutting the same job if you have a lot of pieces on using both vinyl cutters. Even though the second vinyl cutter is slower, the older vinyl cutter might be slower, it's still saving you time because you, you've used that older vinyl cutter and you know how, to, how it works and everything, so you could arguably save a bunch of time by just using your old equipment as opposed to getting rid of it, right? And of course, that faster vinyl cutter, the newest, latest, greatest, is supposed to cut faster and more accurate, so you're gonna have better results doing that. All right, so the second part of vinyl cutting, um, pressing shirts with vinyl, is weeding the shirts. Weeding vinyl can take a very long time. 
especially if it's a complex design, especially if it's a multicolor design and stuff like that, the more complex, the more, the more time it takes, right? We all know that. That's why I put my shirts together. So how do you save time weeding vinyl? You pretty much you pretty much can't if you're weeding vinyl. The only thing that they have that they make to like kind of like ease the process is a weeding table that heats the vinyl up on the on, on the back side so that you can weed it easily easier. But you pretty much always have to weed the vinyl. You can hire an employee to weed the vinyl, but that's not really efficient uh, if you're not you know if you don't have the uh, the business for it. If you're not you know consistently making money, then you're going to be paying somebody and it's going to be eating up into your profits. But yeah, that could work too. But for the most part, that's why things like DTF and people look at white toner and people look into even DTG if you have a bigger budget. That's why those methods are taken up, taken off because people graduate and they get tired of weeding vinyl. So they just say, okay, so how do I just print the image onto a shirt? And that's why uh, DTFs, like I said, DTF printers, like I said, and all those other methods are gaining popularity and gaining popularity fast because you don't have to weed vinyl. Even if you go on to another method like DTF, a DT, DTF printer or a DTG printer or a white toner transfer printer, you still should not get rid of your vinyl cutter or vinyl cutters because there's always going to be a job one day that somebody might specifically request vinyl or somebody might say that um, the vinyl cutter uh, or you might think in your mind, well, well, there might be a design that might look better in vinyl, right? Or there might be a simple design, like just some black text on a shirt with a, a you know, a name and, and a number or something like that that might look better in vinyl. Or there might be a type of vinyl that doesn't have any issues, like um, my favorite flock vinyl, which pretty much lasts forever because you can iron over top of it, right? You could, certain things that you would do might be better using a vinyl cutter. So the solution to optimizing your vinyl cutter situation or your vinyl cutting business would be to, ran out of uh, bobbin thread, would be to get another vinyl cutter or to totally get out of vinyl cutting and to upgrade into, um, into like a DTF printer or buying DTFs because you have to, there's no way to beat the weeding process. You absolutely have to weed the vinyl, all right? So you can also get more than one heat press, but um, vinyl pressing, it only takes like uh, 10 to 15 seconds, you know, so you wouldn't be saving that much time here. We're trying to optimize the maximum optimization for our businesses. So the best bet would be to have another vinyl cutter so you can cut large orders faster, but you still got to weed it. So get yourself somebody else, work staff to help you weed that faster, those jobs faster so that you can pump out more product, right? If you, if you want to do vinyl cutting. All right, so the next thing. Most of you guys that watch my channel went from vinyl cutter to uh, brother embroidery machine, and you guys are like kind of like following my path a little bit. So, okay, brother embroidery machine, say you have that business and you wanna scale that business. What is something that you can do, or, or better yet, let's, let's use our thinking method. What is the one thing and with a single needle water machine that takes up the most time once you, you know, and, and, and how can you make that faster? That's pretty easy, that's pretty easy. So you got your brother SE600, rewind this just a little bit. You got your brother SE600, right? You wanna make that process faster because that's what your business calls for. You wanna pump out more, more product faster, right? And you, you specialize in that four by four hoop or whatever. You wanna pump out your left chest or whatever faster. How do you do that? Just get another machine, easy, easy fix. Get another machine and that solves that problem. Easy peasy, um, no rocket science here. Nice and easy, that solves that easily, right? So, uh, kind of noisy, let's move. All right, that solves that. And after you graduate from, you know, the SE600, you look, in, you look into the multi needles. But we'll, we'll get into the multi needles um, in the next one. Okay, so in the, in the next couple, uh, next as we as we progress. So next thing people do, okay, you go DTG or you go white toner. Okay, so let's say white toner because that's a less expensive one. So in white toner, what are the things in white toner and the processes that take the longest, and how can we optimize them? 
in white toner, when you think of white toner and the process and what takes long, the marrying process takes a very long time. Marrying process takes a long time. Um, how do we optimize that? How do we, how do we, how do we make ourselves um, uh, go through that process faster so we can scale our business, right? Because white toner transfer printers, you, getting two white toner transfer printers wouldn't be necessarily beneficial because the printers print out really, really fast. So two white toner printers would not be in the, a, a, a valid thing, from, from my, in my opinion. Having another heat press, having two heat presses, because when you marry the sheets, you have to press them down for a long time, long period of time, right? So having two heat presses um, with the white toner transfer printer can speed up your production. Having another person that's skilled in the A to B process is also a valid solution, all right? Because they can peel too. But I'd say for each person, you could probably handle, each person can probably handle two to three heat presses, right? So each person should be marrying three things at a time. Two to be safe, three if you're highly skilled. So white toner transfer printer, adding a heat press to your, to your uh, arsenal can speed up that process and help you optimize your strategy, right? So when you're upgrading your heat presses, guys, do not get rid of your old heat press because no matter what process you're doing, whether it be vinyl, not so much embroidery, unless you're doing mixed media, um, but even if you're pressing vinyl, having two heat presses can be useful because somebody, one of your employee or something, or a friend or a family member can be pressing the other design while you're pressing this design, optimizes your workflow, right? White tone transfer printer, you know, you're curing, faster because you can press one and two at the same time and not, not curing but you're uh, you're uh doing the a to b process faster you press one let it go for a few seconds right and then you press the other one and boom by that time the second one's over you, you peel it off other one pops up or other one's getting ready to pop up put the put the one put another a to b sheet underneath that heat press just popped open and you just peeled it off boom now that, that second one popped off, boom, do that peel, put another one in, press it, this one pops up, boom, peel, boom, A to B, press it, that one popped off, and, and now, now you're cooking on gas, you're moving faster, making those transfers, right? Because white toner transfer printer, you're ultimately making transfers, and you want to think of how do I make that faster so I can optimize my business. All right, next, next. DTG, DTG, how do we optimize that? And what are the processes, what are the things in DTG that take the longest time? Okay, so the things that take the longest time in DTG, and I'm just going off of the things that I do, you guys can cater this and really sit down and think about what you do in your studio and think about how you can start to scale that process, how you can make that process faster so you can optimize your business. Because when you optimize your business, once again, you're able to take more orders, you're able to produce more garments, you're able to produce more stuff, which means you can make more money. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make more money by optimizing these processes, right? I'm sure something pop over there. I don't know what it was. All right, but um, DTG, what takes the most time? Pre-treating shirts. Pre-treating shirts. So there's pre-treating shirts and printing the actual garment and maybe curing the garment. Okay, so how do you optimize pre-treating a shirt? I made a video before where I showed you guys my pre-treating process and how I speed it up. All right, so there's two things that you can do. You can avoid pre-treat altogether and buy pre-pre-treated shirts, which I kind of don't recommend because I think you should know how to pre-treat a shirt. But if you want to speed up that method, you can get a pre-treater so you're not using the Wagner spray gun, right? And you can add on another heat press, right? You can add on two to three heat presses. The more heat presses you got, the better. I'd say three heat presses, one person can operate and you'll be, you'll be non-stop if you had three heat presses. If you had three heat presses, you'll be pre-treating shirts, curing shirts, super, super fast. Two works good, three, perfect. Can't beat it, fast, efficient, pre-treating the most, you'll always be doing something, you'll get the process down packed and you'll pre-treating will be nothing, you'll knock those garments out in no time. Next process though, next part of that process with DTG is actual printing on that shirt. 
printing on that shirt. There's no way to get around it. How much time it takes that garment to print out on that DTG is how much time it takes it to print out. There's no way of getting around it. The only thing that you can do is to buy another DTG machine. So to scale a DTG business, you would have to buy more heat presses or buy another, and, and, not or, and buy another DTG machine. Now I know what you guys are thinking. I don't have enough money for that or you might not have the, you know, the money or the space, right? And guess what? Once upon a time, I didn't have the space, right? Once upon a time, I thought it was expensive, right? But what you wanna remember about your business is, your business should pay for what your business needs, right? If your business can't pay for what that business needs, then your business doesn't need it. It's not a need, it's a want. All right. If your business needs something, your business will be able to pay for that something. If your business can't pay for that thing, then your business doesn't need it. You want it. Does that make sense? So, for example, when you get to the point where you're starting to get consistent business and you're buying new equipment and you don't have any more space, right? If you're generating revenue, then the business will pay for the larger space right because you're getting so much business you're like man i need to move out of here like when i when i got to the point where i said i was buying equipment and didn't have anywhere to put it the business was able to pay for the bigger space so it made sense if your business can't pay for the multi-needle embroidery machine then you don't need the, then the business doesn't need it you want it right the business wants it the business doesn't need it your business can only you can only get what your business can pay for. All right, remember that. So, DTG. Once you buy more than one DTG machine, the amount that you're printing should be easy to pay for the second machine or even, and, and even the first machine. Trust me, trust me. I have a formula, I've done the math. If you are getting enough work, the costs of these machines are very, very minute. I've done the research with a more expensive machine, more expensive than the DTG printer, or the embroidery machines, the multi-head embroidery machines. If your business can pay for that machine, then your business needs that machine. If your business can't pay for it, right? If you're not generating the, the business enough to pay for it, then your business doesn't need it. It's a want, right? And there's nothing wrong with wanting a, mo a multi-needle because it's, it'll save you time versus a single needle, all right? And your time is more important, all right? Your time is more important, so it's okay to want and get <laughs> even though you don't have business for the multi-needle because saving time is not having to change threads. It's like, it's a, it's a, something's a no-brainer and that's a no-brainer. I'll tell you what else is a no-brainer with multi-needle embroidery machines because we move past DTG machines, right? Okay, let's finish up with DTG. Okay, so having a second machine cuts the time in half because you're able to print shirts faster. Having more heat presses enable you to cut the time in, in half because you're able to pre-treat shirts faster and you're able to cure the shirts faster once they're, the DTGs have printed the shirts, right? So having more than one DTG, that's how you scale that business. All right, last but not least, we're not going to go in the, um, the Goku Pros or screen print or anything like that. We're just going to end it embroidery. Last but not least, embroidery. Multi-needle, speaking of multi-needle embroidery machines. I have a formula that I'm going to show you guys in another video. I created it in, in Apple Numbers based off of some, some guys um, that were at Deco Summit. Shout out to Anderson and shout out to, oh my gosh, I forgot the other guy's name. I don't remember. When, when, I, when I show you the formula, I'll, I'll, I'll shout him out. But um, I think his name was Gary. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, shout out to those guys because from what they told me, I created a formula that makes this a no-brainer. When it comes to embroidery, the more heads you have, the more money you will make if, if you have the business. But... The heads, once people see that you have the heads, it will get you more business because you're able to produce faster. And when you're able to produce faster, you're able to make more money because it takes you less time to do it. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay, so say, say you have 20 hats, right? 
say you have 20 hats. All right, let me get my calculator out here. Say you have a 20 hat job, right? And that 20 hat job, right? Each hat has, let's say 20,000 stitches, right? 20,000 stitches each hat. 20,000 and you're running your machine like I run mine, 800 stitches per minute. 20,000 stitches divided by 800 stitches per minute is gonna be 25 minutes per hat. So 25 minutes per hat times 20 hats is 500 minutes. 500 minutes is 500 minutes. So it's gonna take you 500 divided by 60, it's one hour. It's gonna take you eight hours and 30 minutes to do that job. Eight hours and a little bit over that, because, right? Because you gotta do other stuff in between there, but roughly about eight hours and 30 minutes. If you have more heads, right? You can take that same equation. We got 20,000 stitches, right? 20,000 stitches divided by 800 stitches per minute, which you're running your machine, equals 25 minutes, right? 25 minutes. 25 minutes, right? Um, what am I doing? 25 minutes times 20 hat order. 500 minutes. Now you take that 500 minutes, right? And you divide that by the number of heads that you have. Let's say you got three heads divided by three equals 166 minutes, roughly. A little bit, 167 minutes, all right? And you divide that by, um, divide that by 60, right? Two hours and 2.78 minutes. Two, two hours and uh, 45 or so minutes, right? So, so that eight hour job just turned into a little bit over two and a half hours. See the magic of um, having, being more efficient? So if you're able to consistently do that, right? If you got, if you're able to consistently have orders for, um, for, 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 for 20 hats, hypothetically speaking, right? Normally it would have took you one day to complete one order, but now if it only takes you a little over two and a half hours, you can probably do like three orders or, or you know, two, two orders and be relaxed, three orders and, and, and it, it'll take you the same amount of time as it would to, to do that job if you had one machine. So over time, over a fast amount of time, those two extra machines or those two extra heads will pay for themselves super, super fast if you have the business for it, all right? So I um, hope that makes sense to you guys. Let me know in the comments down below if it makes sense to you guys. So that's why I think that you guys need to focus more on efficiency and focus a little bit on doubling down on your equipment and not getting rid of old equipment because old equipment can help you help your business be more efficient and therefore make you more money. I hope this helps. Thank you so much. Leave your comments and your thoughts down in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed already, give this video a thumbs up so that it can get out there in front of more people. And it's your boy, Alan Wade. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, and if you're in the market, you heard the record my MT-1501 and brought in the whole time in the background while we were doing this video, right? Stop once for thread change. Yeah, and I'm doing hitties. Yeah, but um, if you're in the market for Rakoma MT-1501 or Rakoma MT-1502 or Rakoma 2002 8S or Rakoma 2001 8S, use my Rakoma affiliate link in the description down below to purchase yours. It helps me out a lot. It helps the channel out a lot. Use my Rakoma white toner link if you want to buy a RP200, a Luminar's RP200. It helps the channel out a lot. Upgrade your equipment if you want to scale right if your business needs it if your business can sustain it then go ahead and do it because if you want your business to grow that's the only way it will grow that's the only way my business grew you guys sat here and you watched it you guys sat here and you witnessed it i kept on getting equipment and i kept on doubling down equipment and i kept on doubling down equipment and the money started getting bigger i was able to do more jobs get more jobs i'm still doing more jobs i'm still growing why because i'm optimizing I'm doubling down, I'm getting more equipment. But while I'm getting more equipment, I'm keeping my old equipment. So now when it's time to do a job, I can knock it out faster. I'm not just saying this thing, guys. I'm, 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 you're watching it. I'm not just talking about it, all right? Thank you so much for watching. It's your boy, Alan Wade. Like, comment, subscribe. 
See, talk to you guys on the next one. Peace. Turn up that, crank it up. Why listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best, baby?